Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern OpenGL series. In this lesson, we're going to be continuing our discussion about mathematics and OpenGL and talking about a little bit more linear algebra in the context of the GLM library. That's the OpenGL mathematics library, which is freely available. We set this up in previous lessons, so make sure that you go ahead and check those out if you haven't in the playlist in the description below. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss these future lessons that we have. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you GLM, the mathematics library, in the context of the C++ code and teach you a little bit about the math. This is going to be a full derivation. If you want to see something like that, comment below and then I'll consider doing a separate series on that. But I think this will give you enough intuition that you can go ahead and dive into some other resources. All right. With that said, we've set up GLM here. Again, check out the previous video if you want to go ahead and see where those headers are. In my directory here, what I've done is I've gone ahead and set up a little structure here. I've got a note here that I've got set up uh, in a directory back here, the third party and then the GLM library. So it is uh, available. You'll see how I compile in a moment. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and get started here from our main. And where we wanna start from is just this idea of a vertex, some piece of data that we wanna plot here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a VEC4 to plot this information. And you'll see why in a moment here. But in the X, I'm going to go ahead and plot at about the one coordinate on the Y axis around the five and on the Z, so positive Z coming towards us around here. So this point's going to sort of take us up here to the Z, to the Y axis and then out a little bit to the Z, maybe somewhere around here is where our actual vertex would be in 3D space. I know it's hard to represent without having multiple points, but this is what we've got here. So let me go ahead and just kind of clear this up here and I'll just label our point just about here and let's go ahead and annotate it one comma five comma one okay so that's just some vertex and as we know in graphics we're going to have at least three vertices to draw triangles as we've already done previously in this series but again let's just focus on one point point. and the point here and where we use linear algebra is that we're going to apply some operation to this point to translate it or rotate it or scale that point if we apply that same operation to a series of points that make up a triangle such that maybe we want to translate this object backwards here, like I'm doing so, that's how we'll move our objects. So again, we're just applying some mathematical transformation to each individual vertex, and that's what moves an object. Okay, so that's what we're going to learn how to do in our shaders and so on. Uh, but let's go ahead and try to understand the mathematics. Okay. So I've got this point here, 1.0, 5.0, and 1.0. Now you'll notice there's a fourth coordinate here. This is the W coordinate, and I haven't explicitly labeled it here. But it actually plays an important part, an important role in computer graphics for determining if this is a point that we're representing with this vector or a direction. Now, as you know, points and directions are different concepts. A vector is by default something that has a magnitude and a direction. There's no real location, but a point is something that's in space. So we use this one at the end to delineate that this is a point here. And there's actually some nice mathematical properties of this. Say if I have two points here, and I'll actually add the uh, one in our uh, diagram. So let me go ahead and just put it here so that we know this is a point here. And if I create some other point here, uh, and let's go ahead and guess where this location is, something like one, five, Maybe in the z-axis, it looks like it's maybe negative three and uh, also one here. If I try to add these points together, what's going to happen is I'll have a two. Again, I'm just adding each of the components up. 10, negative three plus one would give me a negative uh, two. And then I'll get a two in this last uh, spot here. So hopefully everyone can see I'm just adding up each component here of x, y, z, and this fourth coordinate, which is w here. Now, if I end up with a two here, that's sort of nonsensical in the sense of what operation I've done with this point here. Okay, so that's how we're able to, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to add two points together. We can subtract two points and that'll give us a direction. So if I was going to subtract these two points, let's go ahead and do the same exercise. I'll do this point and subtract from it this point. I would get something like zero, five minus five is zero, negative three minus one is negative four and one minus one gives me a zero. And this last uh, value here, W, so W equals zero here, indicates that we have a direction. Okay, so that's the idea here. 
So this gives us an actual vector, negative 4 along the z-axis, so here. And as I sort of mark this here, you can kind of see that's how I get from this point to this point here, right, when I did this subtraction, okay? So that tells us, again, if we have a value of 0 at the end, it's a vector. If we have 1, it's a point. And based off the mathematical operations that we do, things like a point minus a point, that yields us a vector. And again, mathematically, we can see at the end, it just sort of ends up that way where we get a 0 at the end. And if I do something like a point plus a point, we see that that is just uh, nonsense. It doesn't work. But I can also do things like vector minus vector, which we saw in the previous lesson. And of course, if I just pay attention to the last coordinate, it will just be 0 minus 0. So that is also yielding us a new vector, OK, or vector plus a vector, et cetera, et cetera. So again, I didn't want to do a deep dive into the math, but that's just what that last point means. OK, and as you know, as folks who have been watching this channel, I tend to like to just tell you how things work. All right, so let's go ahead and just back up this example here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our uh, W coordinate here, and you'll just have to trust me that, again, that's the math that works out. W equals 1 means we're working with a point. W equals 0 means we're working with a vector. So I'll just leave that as our cheat sheet there. OK, so this is a vertex. And we say that this is just its local space or local coordinates okay i've just specified exactly on line 29 where this vertex is and by now you sort of understand this and get the point here okay so let's go ahead and move down a little bit in our code here so this next chunk of what i'm doing here and i'll indicate this here these next few lines here is i'm creating what we call a model okay what i actually want to do or how i want to transform this point here and this is going to be something where we move from local to something known as world space. OK, and if you read texts on computer graphics, this is going to be the idea moving from local space to world space. OK, because again, my goal is I want to transform this point somewhere, whether I translate it, maybe rotate it somewhere, or I can scale it, which again is a sort of form of uh, it's similar to like a translation. It's going to adjust this point, uh, this vertex in space. So what I'm doing here, though, with the actual type that I'm creating, this GLM mat 4, is what's called a matrix. OK, and as it stands for, it's a 4 by 4 matrix. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And I'm going to draw it down here. And specifically, this is an identity matrix. So I'm specifying 1.0 here to make this identity. So that means along the diagonal, of my matrix, there are ones. In every other location, there are zeros. OK, so I'm just going to quickly fill in the zeros here. And this is a matrix that is 4 by 4. So it's four rows by four columns. Or in OpenGL, we are column major. So we have four columns here going up and down and the four rows. OK, if you're in DirectX or some other API, Direct3D, Vulkan, Metal, etc., you might have some different adjustment. But in OpenGL, we are column major. OK, all right. So what does this give me? Well, basically, my idea is I'm going to take this matrix here and I can apply it to this point here. OK, so what does that mean when I say apply? Well, this means ma multiply this matrix by this actual point here, OK, which I'm representing with a VEC4. So I'm going to do a matrix multiplication by this vector here. OK, now how does that actually transform this point? Well, if I have the identity here, which let me go ahead and label identity, then it's not going to change anything, right? The identity when you learn in math is 1 times some value 7 yields you 7, or 7 times 1 equals you 7. You know, it doesn't change anything. I've got 1s down the diagonal here, uh, so it doesn't uh, multiply anything. OK, so what I want to do here, again, is take this matrix and multiply it by some uh, point here. Let's go ahead and label our point 1, 5, 1. And since it's a point, I've got a 1 here. OK, how do I do matrix multiplication? Well, I take the row by the column, and that will yield me, uh, well, I take the dot product like we learned from last lesson, 1 times 1 plus 0. Uh, times 5, which will give me a 0, 
uh, 1 times uh, 0, which gives me a 0, and 0 times 1, which also gives me a 0. Okay, so I end up just getting a 1 here in this first uh, column here. Uh, and that sort of makes sense, right? And if I go through this math here, again, I'm going to get a 1, a uh, and let me just go ahead and I'll complete the math here. But this yields me a new vector here. And since I'm multiplying by the identity, I just get 1, 5, 1, 1 here. Okay, so we get a new vector. This is the new location. Okay, and after this transformation here, this is my world coordinate or world space. Okay, and that's our goal today to understand this transformation. There's other transformations that we're going to do when we introduce a camera to get us in view space and so on, but this is the idea. Okay, so now that we've got this idea that we have these matrices that are going to move somehow this point, let's look at some, okay? This is the identity matrix, so it doesn't do anything for us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just point you to a great resource, learnopengl.com, which shows the matrices that I'm going to demonstrate in code with GLM. So there's a scaling matrix, and it looks like this. Along the diagonal, so where our identity was, we have the terms S1, S2, S3, and that's scaling us in the X, Y, and Z dimension. Okay, so how exactly is that working? Well, let's go ahead and look at uh, our example here. This column here is how much we're affecting x. So it's sort of the x. This is how we're affecting y. And this is how we're affecting z. On the fourth column, well, we've got these special values here, uh, again, for the purpose of helping us with translation. And again, that's a sort of, uh, you can look up how that's derived, um, or I can make a video if that's useful. But anyways, this is how we're affecting uh, the x uh, of this point here. So how far am I moving here? That's in this first uh, column of our matrix, Y and Z. Okay, so that's the way to read this. Uh, and I wish they would have labeled here S of X, S of Y, uh, S of uh, Z here. Um, but that's that's what's going on here. Okay, but they do show the corresponding points here. Okay, so that's one of our special transformations. It's going to scale, which means to either grow or shrink where our point is, okay? And this could be done uniformly or non-uniformly. Okay, then we've got a special, another special matrix uh, for translation, which is how we're going to move our point, okay? Now, for those of you who are linear algebra fans, essentially what this is doing, T of X, T of Y, and T of Z, here at the center of my screen here, these three uh, points here, go ahead and click out of that. Uh, it's effectively moving our origin uh, point, and that's how we do translation in computer graphics. Okay, don't need to drive that right now, but this is how we translate or move a point. And then finally, for rotation, I'll go ahead and scroll down. We have three special rotation matrices for rotating about the x, the y, or the z axis. Okay, so that's the idea. And again, you can go ahead and look at how these are derived. For now, we're just going to know that we can rotate about some particular axis, and we can actually define what this axis is. Uh, I'll show you what I mean uh, in a moment. Okay, and there are other ways to rotate if you've done stuff in, say, Unity 3D with quaternions. Um, you know, we'll get to that uh, eventually. Okay, so just take for granted that we have these special matrices already built into us in GLM, uh, and that's why we're going to start with this library. Okay, so let's go ahead and perform some transformations to move this point here into world space, or in general, just move it. Okay, so let me go ahead and start by uh, just compiling this program here, and I'll go ahead and uh, bring in some stuff. And what I'm going to be showing you is just where is our uh, point here, okay, in a moment, okay? But let's go ahead and start with uh, scaling here, okay? So in GLM, what I'm going to do here is, again, I have my identity matrix. That's here, just sort of the default here. But notice that I've given this this name model. And again, the model is just sort of how we talk about uh, things in world space. It's how or where our actual uh, object's going to be. So we're taking our model uh, to world space. And what I want to do is perform a scale operation. So we've got GLM uh, scale here. Uh, oops, let me bring back my ID, bring back my operation. There we are. And the idea is what scale is doing is it's saying, okay, what kind of um, scale matrix do we want to build here? That special transformation matrix. Okay, so I'll go ahead and scroll up here to uh, show you scale again. That was the one with the diagonals uh, right here. 
And I want to scale along the X axis, my points by two, the Y by two and the Z by two. So I'm effectively doubling my X, Y, and Z here. Okay, this doesn't have to be uniform, but that's what I'm doing here. Okay, and that's going to take, you know, this along the diagonal for our scaling matrix and multiply each of these by two. Okay, and I specify those floating point values. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and see what happens when I do this. Now, I've got this again matrix here that I'm going to multiply by my point and get a new uh, value for my point that effectively moves it in the world in some way. So this is a scaling operation. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do to capture this is go ahead and first, I just want to print off the actual scale matrix that's generated so I can show you that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our program here. So I've got it here. Uh, now this is a bit of a mess here. You can just print out the matrix. Uh, I'm going to show you how to just print off every column. Uh, just to make this a little bit cleaner. This was something I wanted to show you last time, right? So I could just grab the first column here uh, and Let's just grab and print off each of the columns and then it'll line up a little bit nicer Okay, so this is just a little trick you can do in GLM uh, And you could you should probably write a function for this but uh, trick to print off each column Okay, this is why you watch this stuff to learn these tricks uh, and then we can see our matrix here, right? They are vec fours because they have uh, four uh, values here. Uh, but here's uh, our actual matrix here. Okay. Uh, and sorry, this is actually printing off the uh, rows. All right. So anyways, you can see that this is laid out uh, like our diagram. And you can see where the actual two uh, shows up here. Now let's go ahead and just change one of these. And again, this is how you can kind of debug and play around with this. Let's change this to three. Okay. In the first value. And I'll go ahead and rerun it. And you, get, you can see that, well, part of our vector here we want to multiply by three, whatever our first point is. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me just uh, leave these as twos here. And now let's actually do something with our uh, matrix here. Okay. We want to actually multiply this. Okay. So in order to apply our model matrix to the vertex, we're going to, again, multiply the model by the vertex here. Okay. So I've created this, what I'm calling in world space now vertex okay it's actually been transformed here okay and then we can actually print this off and let's see what the result is here okay we'll go ahead and run it we can see what our matrix is and then our vertex in world space well if i've scaled it by two in each dimension it's now two ten two and you can verify that if you multiply one by two five by two and also one by two here in this point that those are the correct uh, coordinates here OK, uh, and then also, you know that this is a point in space because I have a one in the last dimension. OK, so but we know that, again, we have moved this thing. So again, by scaling this, I've moved this. Uh, and again, it's going to be kind of hard to represent. But, you know, in our X by two, in our Y by bit and by our Z. So it ends up, I don't know, somewhere out here in space, but, you know, closer to the X axis. So anyway, that's where our point is. Maybe I want to actually shift it over here a bit. but. That's the idea. OK. OK, um, so let's go ahead and look at our other operations. So that's scale. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and just comment this out. And let's look at rotation. We'll do the same thing, essentially. Uh, so in GLM, we have GLM rotate. Again, uh, we build a matrix here just the identity for the first parameter, and then the angle that we want to rotate. Now, it's important to note that in GLM, we use radians. That's what's accepted. So there's a GLM radians command. And this would be the angle as you would sort of think of it in degrees. So 180 degrees. So uh, again, it's sort of half turn. OK, now in radians, you can again think about what that is. It's sort of halfway around. And then the next parameter, which I'm going to go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger so you can see everything on the screen here is uh, what axis do we want to actually rotate about? So if I put in 0, 1, 0, this is the vector that I'm rotating about. And I'll draw it on the screen here. Uh, it's just a vector that's pointing up along the y-axis, OK? Uh, so 0, 1 would come up something like this. But that's what I'm rotating about. So you can go ahead and do this experiment if you just sand straight, right? Point your arm up into the air. Uh, and that's sort of making this vector here, 0, 1, 0, just a vector pointing up 1 in the y-axis. And then if you spin, you should be you know, turning uh, like I'm going to do here. 
just turning one direction or the other, depending on how many degrees you are rotating. And from rotating 180 degrees, that should be a half turn. You should be facing the opposite direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Um, so where does this land us? Well, here's the, um, well, I guess I'm just printing off the model matrix here. Um, but if you look very carefully, right, it's not the identity with ones across the diagonal. Some of these values are negative and some of them are positive. Now notice the one in the Y axis is just a one. So it's unchanged, right? When you're spinning around, you're not moving up or down. You're changing on the Y axis. And this will be true if you're rotating about the X axis or the Z axis. Again, you might have to do a little bit more work just to see how that's uh, looking. But you will see there are some negative uh, values here. And that has to do with how we are rotating, right? So what we are effectively doing when we're rotating about the Y axis, and I'm just going to visualize it here, is we're rotating about the Y axis here, right? Around this point here. OK, now I know my drawing's getting a little bit messy. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and draw just a point up here, draw a blue point and say that we're rotating around here. So we could make a full circle around this uh, point here. That's indicated by 0, 1, 0. OK, that's the axis that we're rotating about. That's what uh, GLM allows us to do relatively easy. OK, and then if we multiply that by our vertex, again, we're moving. So we're at negative 1, 5. Again, the y dimension isn't changed and negative 1 again. OK, so this sort of makes sense. And if you look at the math here, if we're at 1, 1, we would sort of do a half turn. So we'd end up at negative 1 uh, in the x-axis and negative 1 in z. OK, so you can play around with it. That's the purpose of this video, to have this uh, code available you can learn from. All right, let's look at the last one, which is probably the most intuitive, uh, which is translation here. And again, doing the sort of the same idea, uh, building a matrix here. Uh, this is building a translation matrix. This is what this is doing when I have these uh, GLM mat uh, 1.0 here. I'm just saying, okay, give me a identity matrix to start from, and then build me a translation matrix where I'm going to go negative two in the Z direction. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, on our drawing over here. I'm going to be moving back here. Okay, two units, and store that here in this model and then multiply that translation matrix by our vertex such that it will push it back into our world two units here, negative two. OK, so let's go ahead and try this again. I'll recompile. And um, oh, let me make sure I save, recompile and rerun. And if we look carefully here, we will see that we have a negative one here before we were positive one in the axis. So we have effectively moved this point backwards. OK, so now it's uh, negative here. So it should be 1, 5, negative 1, as indicated. It's still a point, so there's a 1 in our W coordinates. All right. So with that said, that's the code that I've got set up here. Now, something that's important to keep in mind, I've given you a relatively simplistic view here. Let's go ahead and build this up just a tiny bit here. And what I want to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and do something with our scale, rotation, and our translation. OK, so I'm going to actually build these as uh, separate matrices here. OK, so let's actually just call this GLM uh, and matrix four here. I'm going to make this S because we're doing scaling. GLM matrix four uh, R for our rotation. And let's go ahead and do GLM matrix four uh, T for our translation. OK. So I'm able to create a scale matrix, rotation matrix, and a translation matrix. OK, now what I want to actually do here, and let's go ahead and um, from our model matrix, let's go ahead and store these operations. OK, now let's go ahead and uh, think about what we want to do. So what I'm basically doing is compounding these operations here. So let's go ahead and translate to move our point. And then I'm going to rotate my point. And then I'm going to scale it. OK? So translate first, then rotate, then scale. Now, if you notice carefully how I was speaking here for these operations, and I'll go ahead and uh, let me actually capture these uh, before I print things off. Notice that I sort of wrote them backwards, right to left. OK, that's the order that we apply our matrix transformations in. OK, so let's go ahead and just try this off. 
try this uh, and see what this is. Um, oops, and I add an extra uh, R here. Make sure our code compiles. And we can go ahead and see, you know, where did our vertex land in space? Okay, negative 2, 10, and uh, positive 2 here. Let's try to change these so that I uh, will do a different operation just to show you or, or to see if we land at negative 2, 10, 2, and 1 here. Okay, this time maybe let's scale first, rotate, and then translate. Okay, I'll go ahead and rerun this. And this time we end at negative 2, 10, and negative 4. Okay, which was different, again, just to highlight above here, negative 2, 10, and 2. So the uh, takeaway here is that the order of operations matters. Uh, so let me go ahead and just slow us down. So order of operations matters, okay? And we think right to left, okay, when applying our actual operations. So we scale first, rotate, and then translate, okay? So that's really all you need to know to get started with moving stuff around. Now, in practice, what we'll probably end up doing on a, on our uh, actual graphics programs is we'll create these matrices, and then the actual operations, the actual multiplications, those are going to be offloaded onto our GPU because it's a little bit more efficient to do that, okay? But we can go ahead and see and play around with uh, this little playground in GLM to see what we're actually doing, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, I'll go ahead and just scroll through the code. Uh, one time here, just so you can see. Again, we set up GLM. Here we set up our vertex. We talked about W equal to 1, this last coordinate here. The identity matrix, which will ultimately store our result. Scale, rotation, and translation are three special matrices. How we apply these in order uh, from right to left in that order of multi matrix multiplication matters. And you can check this by doing matrix multiplication by hand. A little trick here for printing off your matrix for debug and then applying to your vertex this matrix or series of multiplications to transform a individual vertex. And again, we'll do this for every single vertex in our program. That's how we get things to move. And then just ultimately printing out the result. And here was, of course, our little drawing board, which got a little bit messy, but uh, hopefully it was useful to illustrate the points here. All right, folks, so that was a bit of a monster lesson on the mathematics, some of the mathematics on OpenGL. So hopefully it was useful. Hopefully it helps you get a little bit of an intuition to how things work here. And hopefully you enjoyed this. If you want more lessons on the math and how things work, again, I think they're important. I think uh, this is the key to becoming a good graphics programmer, understanding the math. Uh, you know, please let me know in the comments. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those lessons if I build those. And thank you, as always, for your time. Make sure you join our community forums. They're free and in the description below. And if you can, go ahead and support as a member and you occasionally get some uh, secret uh, posts for that and discounts. So go ahead and uh, check out this lesson, try out some of the code, and we'll see you very, very soon, folks.